Hey Wolfpack and welcome back. I hope all is well and I hope you enjoyed yesterday's video. Today, we're reading I Never Should Have Asked My Girlfriend to Take Her Mask Off by Her Creation. With that said, whether you're sitting around a campfire, on the night shift, or even lying in bed, let my voice soothe your nightmares. I haven't had a real girlfriend in years, but I recently started dating Allison, the new barista at my usual coffee place. I found myself getting pretty lonely while everyone's staying at home, and she always managed to brighten my mornings up. She memorized my order within just a few days and seemed genuinely interested in me. Eventually, I did feel like she was flirting with me, but I wasn't going to make the first move. Chatting customers up is part of her job and I didn't want to make her feel uncomfortable. You can probably imagine how excited I was. Then, when she wrote her number on the side of my cup almost a month ago, I waited until later that night to text her, and since then, we've been talking non-stop. I liked her so much that it was only about a week in when I asked her to be my girlfriend. I was nervous she'd think it was too quick, or that she'd say no, but we made it official as of that day. I was pretty stoked. I mean, she's beautiful, sweet, and funny. So, I texted my best friend Alex immediately afterwards. He called me up on FaceTime a few minutes later laughing so hard he'd gone completely red. Apparently, he'd been talking to her himself a couple months ago, but nothing had really come of it. He said he'd support me, but warned me to be careful with Allison because she's crazy. I brushed him off though because he has a nasty habit of calling all of his exes crazy while failing to recognize his own issues, being a serial killer to name one. I feel like if all of your exes are crazy, at a certain point, you need to look at the common denominator in your relationships, you. Honestly, I did eventually start to see what he was saying about her. I already mentioned that Allison is beautiful, but I couldn't really be sure of that for a while. Up until last night, I'd never seen her without her mask off, and at the risk of coming off as totally shallow, I was a little wary of that. When half of someone's face is completely covered, you never really know what you're in for. For all I knew, maybe her teeth were all screwed up or something. Allison seemed a little too paranoid about keeping her mask on. Maybe she had something to hide. Before you all come at me for this, let me make one thing clear. I would never expect her to take her mask off in an unsafe situation. I understand why she'd want to stay masked whenever she'd go out in public together. All of our dates are as safe as possible. We go to the park mostly with her masks on and six feet apart. She said that working during a pandemic is enough of a risk, especially because her mother is unwell and needs help sometimes. Again, I completely understand, but it struck me as odd that she'd always have her mask on even when we'd just be exchanging selfies with our respective houses. I rationalized that one away, too, because mass selfies are kind of a cute thing these days. Like a new Snapchat filter. The whole situation made me feel uneasy. We hadn't even kissed, but I liked her a lot. So, I figured she was worth it. It seemed like she was starting to let her guard down a couple weeks ago when she started talking about maybe inviting me to her house. I decided not to push her, not wanting to freak her out by being too eager. Instead, I took some initiative and upped my quarantine game. After two weeks had passed, I asked her yesterday if she'd be willing to meet up at one of our places. I was ecstatic when I got her reply, and excited yes, with her address and a time to come by later that evening. I went about the rest of my day, anxious she'd changed her mind. But the, I'm sorry, but, text didn't come. I was finally going to get a real chance to ask Allison to take off her mask, and I couldn't believe my luck. Now, I feel lucky just to be alive. Anxious, I left my house way too early, and had to slow my pace just so I wouldn't show up there too early. I knocked on her door, and she appeared at the doorway, masked of course, and let me in. I followed her down the hall, past her roommate's room, then into her room. She sat cross-legged on her bed before inviting me to sit beside her by patting the duvet. 
I sat down on the bed awkwardly. I was suddenly very, very nervous. I hadn't been alone with a girl in her bed in, well, I couldn't remember how long. This year has been terribly long, and I never really had luck with girls before all of this anyway. The anxiety sweat started to set in, and I hoped she wouldn't notice, or that at least she wouldn't point it out and laugh. Thankfully, she didn't. We actually had a phenomenal time. We walked for at least an hour, chuckling over stupid jokes and the occasional thump and moan coming from the next room, barely concealed by the thin walls of her apartment. Allison coyly remarked that her roommate certainly hadn't let quarantine slow her love life down, and I laughed even more. Everything was going so well, it seemed like the right time to ask if we could unmask at last. She tensed up almost immediately. I could tell she was nervous. So, I rushed to soothe her. No pressure, babe. We don't have to, but I promise I haven't left my house in two weeks. We've been so safe this whole time. No, I know. You even got your coffee delivered instead of coming in to see me. Allison admitted. She giggled a bit her shoulders relaxing. You first, though. I nodded enthusiastically before, practically tearing my mask off. See? Everything's okay. Even though I couldn't see it from behind her black mask, I knew that she was smiling. Her bright green eyes squinted ever so slightly as soon as I took off my own mask. I smiled in return, trying to make her feel safe and comfortable. Allison took a deep breath as timid hands moved to the sides of her face. Slowly, she pulled the loops of her mask back from behind her ears. I held my breath in anticipation as she eased the fabric covering off of her face. As soon as I saw her face, I was at a loss for words. She looked to me, anxious, searching for the response I was physically incapable of giving at that moment. Throwing her hands over her face, she turned away from me, hiding. I leaned forward to take her forearms in a gentle grasp, guiding her hands away from her face. Then holding them in mine. You're even more beautiful than I thought. A slow smile spread across her face, nearly splitting in two. I was being honest. Allison was the most beautiful girl I'd ever seen. I'd known she was beautiful before, but I struggled to explain the absolute perfection of her face, well observed altogether. Her lips were full and pink. Her skin was like polished porcelain. Her smile was absolutely flawless framed by a pair of adorable dimples. In that moment, I couldn't imagine what she could have possibly been so worried about. We talked for a little while longer, and before long, I knew I had to kiss her. I would have hated myself if I didn't make the next move. Like I said, I'm not great with girls, so I kept stalling, kept doubting myself. Eventually, I just decided to ask her if I could kiss her. I ended up asking her where the restroom was instead. Stepping out of the room, I buried my face in my hands, chiding myself for being such a wimp. I found the bathroom, then ran the tap so I could splash some water on my face. I gave myself a quick pep talk as I stared myself down in the mirror. Get your shit together, man. My anxiety had only continued to escalate, so, too, had the rate of my sweating. Even though Allison hadn't mentioned anything, I was sure I must have smelled like shit. I'm not proud of this, but I started rifling through her bathroom for anything I could use to make myself more appealing before I got even closer to her. I was surprised just by how bare the drawers under the sink were. Most girls I know had an endless supply of beauty products. I struggled to find anything though, until I kneeled down to open the bottom cabinet. It was full of stuff, but nothing like I was expecting. There was a collection of random objects, watches, hats masks, and even wallets, and they all looked like men's things. The one thing that really caught my eye, though, was a silver watch right in front of me. The last time I FaceTimed with Alex, he showed off the exact same one. Nervously, I picked it up, turning it over in my hands to reveal the one thing I didn't want to see. Alex's name engraved on the bottom. Damn it. My worst fears had been confirmed. Allison was still seeing Alex. Maybe still seeing a lot of other guys. She was cheating on me. Fuming, I stormed out of the bathroom, slamming the door my way out. I didn't even care that I left my mask in Allison's room. I didn't want to see her. I didn't care to talk to her at all. 
Alex had been in her house since we started dating, and I knew what he was like. I'd seen what I'd seen, and it proved my worst fears without a doubt. I pulled my phone from my pocket, hands fumbling to find Alex in my contacts. I called him. No response. Classic Alex, I thought. This wasn't the first time something like this had happened though, and he always was too cowardly to own up to what he'd done. I tried his phone a second time, but as soon as the call rang through, a flurry of texts from Allison popped up on my screen. Why did you leave? Come back, babe, I can explain. Seriously, please, it's not what you think. Please, just come back, please. I'm sorry, I don't know what you saw, but I swear there's an explanation. I just need to see you face to face. I left them all unanswered, turning my phone on silent so the constant ding wouldn't drive me mad. I made the walk back home in record time, fueled by nothing but pure rage. I slumped on my couch and fought the urge to text Allison back. Instead, I left my phone face down on the coffee table and laid down. Early this morning, I startled awake, unsure of how I even fell asleep when I was so upset. Hesitantly, I flipped my phone over and was greeted by the expected million unopened texts from Allison. Nothing from Alex, of course. One notification stuck out to me though, a Snapchat from Allison. We rarely talked on that app as is, and I couldn't fight the curiosity anymore, so I opened it. It was a video of her standing in front of the bathroom mirror, right where I'd been last night. It was the first time she sent me a picture or video of herself without her mask on, and I was once again struck by just how gorgeous she was. I felt myself softening towards her until I read the caption, You didn't even wait for me to take off my mask. Confused, I glanced back up at her face. She'd brought her free hand up alongside her jaw, thumb wriggling against the crevice under her ear. She dug her thumb deep into her flesh, so viciously that just watching it freaked me out. That perfect smile grew across her perfect face as her thumb hooked deep into the back of her jaw and the side of her face released. I threw my phone down, still confused but more than absolutely freaking terrified. I didn't want Allison to see the rest and I didn't have to. By the time I gathered the courage to look again, it was over. Allison hadn't tried to contact me since. She still hasn't, and I'll count myself lucky if I never see her again. I called the police right away. They laughed me off at first, but their interest peaked once I mentioned some of the things I'd found in the apartment. Apparently, a lot of guys have gone missing in the area recently, so they decided to stop by her place just in case. When they got there, she was gone. They didn't find her, but they did find the stash of trophies she left behind in the cabinet, all taken from those missing guys. Worst of all, they found Alex's body. He'd been brutalized over the course of a couple weeks, but he'd only been killed last night. I'm devastated to say the least. Not only did I lose my best friend, but I couldn't even save him. I should have raised the alarm when I hadn't heard from him in a while, but I haven't really been seeing anyone these days. Not only that, but I know now that the sounds I laughed off last night were not what Allison said they were. They were the groans of a dying man in pain. They were the desperate thumps of Alex's last attempt to get help. Thanks for listening, Wolfpack. If you want to submit your own story, the links for my email and subreddit will be down below. I've also created a Discord, so if you want to join that, the link will be in the description down below as well. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And with that said, have beautiful nightmares, and I will see you next time.